Hey, my name is Eric Worrell, and in this video, we're going to be talking about the difference between a rat versus a mouse. If you're searching this term online, you might have an infestation right now. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to help you determine what the difference is between these two so you can identify what it is that you're dealing with and also different methods and ways that you can deal with the issue, the infestation in your house. And sorry you're dealing with this because it's pretty gross, but we will get through it. So first thing you need to know that both mice and rats are sociable creatures, but rats prefer to stick with family and hide. So mice are much more curious and will stray from the family to explore. So uh, what this means is that you will find mouse droppings all over the place and that rats will be in a designated area. So maybe the rat bathroom, right? So if you're finding um, the droppings are all over the place, it's most likely mice. If the droppings are very concentrated, it's more likely a rat. However, wild mice and rats are different stories for two reasons. So disease and damage. Despite the fact that much of children's literature has a rat as a mouse hero, wild rats and wild mice can carry bacteria and disease that might be problematic and harmful to your family. Their urine and feces can be toxic and have been known to cause asthma. So as far as the teeth, um, that will give you indicators in the difference between if you might have a mouse or a rat. Uh, both like to gnaw their front incisors and have the same number of teeth, but rats leave a distinguishable larger bite mark and a mouse might leave a more perfect kind of circle about the size of a dime. So if you're looking at bite marks that you might have in your house because they will chew anything, you're looking at about a dime sized bite mark that's very circular and round uh, with a mouse and with a rat, you're looking at something much larger, larger, excuse me. But both will gnaw on just about anything from wires to furniture to wood and even a dog bowl. As far as intelligence and physical capabilities, uh, rodents are highly intelligent uh, creatures. In fact, in the Harvard Business Review, they stated that rats are even more intelligent than humans, which I don't know. I haven't seen a rat be able to do a YouTube video yet. So, uh, you know, I'd probably question that one. But it says it's because their brains are in similar function and structure to the human brain. And despite not being as complex, they take what information is useful and leave out the extra fluff. So this might be relevant to you because uh, this might make rats a little tougher to catch or trap if they figure out what you're doing. They can supposedly smell a predator or trap a mile away. Mice, on the other hand, are very curious. They will more easily fall for a trap, but unlike rats, they can jump a lot further and are much sprier. So rats are smarter, but mice are more agile. So if you're setting up a trap, or at least something to uh, take care of the pest, uh, it's likely that mice might be able to get out of it easier because they're agile, uh, but rats might be a little bit tougher to trick to bring into the actual trap itself. So let's talk about communication. Rats and mice can communicate not only with squeaks and such, but they actually can make a high frequency sound that cannot be heard by human ears. They'll even tap their tails to send messages. Uh, as far as the main difference between the two uh, rodents, it comes down to size. Mice have a small grain shaped dropping about one quarter inch and they'll spread out possibly 75 or 80 a day. So rats have a larger banana shaped dropping at around a half inch to three quarters inch and they drop around 40 to 50 a day but always in the same area so if you find a um, an area that's very concentrated and it's got a little bit of a banana shape to it and it's half inch to three quarter inch probably don't want to get the tape measure out and start you know measuring it you most likely have a rat infestation if it looks like more like it's rice size and it's scattered you more likely have a mouse infestation as far as how the animals can get into your house, these rodents, well, mice can squeeze through a hole the size of a dime and they love to go all over the place for food sources. Rats, on the other hand, are a little bigger and have a set area where, where they will stay. They can fit through a hole the size of a plum or slightly smaller. Mice are usually more varied in color, but are more commonly around brownish tones. They like to live in dark places like rats and like to burrow and nest. Wild rats are always around brown to darker brown to black. In the US, the most common are the roof and Norway rats. Roof live in higher places like trees and attics and Norway rats like to burrow similar to mice. So if you have it you know, in an attic versus possibly an infestation on the outside of your home uh, where they've burrowed, uh, that might give you an idea of what kind of species that you're dealing with. Uh, mice have hairy tails about the same length for the size of their bodies with smaller feet and large ears. You know, we 
familiar with the large ears that are always caricatured for mice, but rats have hairless tails about the same length as their bodies and large feet and small ears. So mice will produce about four to 16 pups per litter, and that's about seven to eight litters per year, which means that one female mouse can produce anywhere from 28 to 128 babies in a year. Uh, so you can see how an infestation can kind of get crazy uh, pretty quick. Each little mouse consume around three grams of food today and need little water. With rats, uh, they can produce about five to 10 pups per litter, and that's around three to six litters a year, which means one female can produce from around 15 to 60 pups per year. Unlike mice, the rat needs to eat around 15 to 30 grams per day, and they drink much more water at around 15 to 16 milliliters a day. They will travel a mile away just for a glass of water. Uh, both species have a very acute sense of smell. Uh, they, the rats and mice are repelled by the scent of highly concentrated peppermint, lavender, and even the smell of bleach. This might not get rid of your mice or rat problem, but it will deter them. So um, having those things around your home uh, could potentially deter, but if you have an infestation, it's not going to solve it. I have seen people ask if baking soda uh, can kill rats. It is deadly to rodents if you mix it with some water and something tantalizing to eat. Uh, mice will be lured to this uh, poison more easily than a rat because, again, rats are a little bit uh, smarter than mice. Uh, we're going to get talking in a little bit, though, about probably some more humane methods to get rid of uh, a, a mouse or rat in your home. Uh, are they nocturnal? Yes. But rats and mice prefer the dark, but that doesn't mean they won't come out in the light of day. Uh, domesticated rats and mice often play in the daytime, and so wild critters aren't that much different. Uh, but they are fearful of predators, and we are certainly considered predators to a rat or a mouse. So when you're afraid of that rat or mouse that you see, just know they're probably dropping droppings themselves at that moment as well. Uh, overall, rats and mice are sim more similar than different. Uh, they're both in the rodent family, love to not eat, drink, and be merry at the price of your home and possibly your family's health. But be sure to keep water sources, pet food, and your own food closed up tightly, and your home's warmth and food will definitely attract them. Uh, I mentioned earlier, as far as some methods for getting rid of the uh, rodents themselves, uh, one of the things you, uh, I've read online that you can do uh, with mice is you can actually create kind of a stared system into a bucket, a sizable bucket, maybe even a trash can. Uh, put a little peanut butter on a cracker in the base of that bucket. So if you have a five gallon bucket, um, what that'll allow the, the uh, mouse to do is they'll climb up the steps and go into the bucket, eat the peanut butter, but then they're stuck. They can jump a decent amount, but they're not typically gonna be able to jump out of a five gallon bucket. So once you uh, catch the uh, mouse that way, you can release them into a field or something of that nature. One of the other things that I found, uh, they sell this online. This is a mouse trap here uh, by a company called Offenzo. Um, I'll open it up so you can kind of get an idea of it. I'll try and get this up on screen pretty close, but basically it looks like a little mailbox. There are air vents for the mouse. You can put the food on here and it just closes the door on the mouse once they go in. So in the morning, you don't have to touch the mouse or anything like that. It's not inside of a trap dead. Um, the mouse can come in here and then you can just release them far away from your home. I'll include a link to this product in the description of this video, but if you found this video helpful, uh, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, thanks for watching and good luck with that infestation. I hope you get taken care of quickly. All right, take care.